Hello everyone, welcome back to Erie Covenant. How was your summer solstice? Leave me a comment below and let me know what you did. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And today we are going to talk about necromancy. Stay till the end of the video and I will give you a free spell out of my own book of shadows. So the definition of necromancy is the practice of communicating with the dead to predict the future or work with or raise the dead or conjure a spirit. Uh, let's talk about my specialty for a bit. This is a darker skill, but very beneficial. <clears throat> Excuse me. Witchcraft, sorcery, dark arts, voodoo, hoodoo, all use it eventually or at some point in their work or divination. To ask the spirits to work with them. Witches have used this for centuries, since the first century, I believe, was one of the first documented cases. There are stories of them using necromancy and some in grotesque ways. The spirits you can work with are humans, plants, animals, earth, spirits, sprites, and demons. As long as it is an energy, you can work with it and summon it. Alright, depending on what purpose you have depends on the extent of the ritual and how dark it will be. A necromancer understands the dead they work with, and they may wear the clothes of the deceased, eat the flesh of the dead, taking them inside of themselves to command. Some may even mutilate the dead body while summoning the dead because it makes them restless, and it's easier to call on the other side. These are versions of links. You must have a link to the dead to summon them. The home of the dead, where they died, or graveyards are where necromancy is usually performed if you're wanting to rise the dead or summon them. But you can uh, summon them and practice this in your own home or in your temple or pra area of practice. Mine's my bedroom. To raise the dead, you must try within a year of them dying or else you will only be able to summon the spirit. The dead are energies in the astral plane, and in the astral plane it is a bit ahead of us and eventually in our future can manifest ahead of time, which is how the dead see the future. So if you manifest something in the astral world, it's going to be ahead of our time here in the material world. I see and speak to the dead, and I've done so since I was two or three. So I've had to learn not much about necromancy, and I had to understand how it works and how spirit energy works. There are a few ways to summon the dead. <clears throat> First, let's talk about the traditional way of the old witches and how they would rise the dead. The ritual calls for the dead to be prepared properly. The bodies have to be removed from the coffin, head facing the east where the sun rises, and the limbs in the shape of a crucified person. A dish of burning wine, mastic, sweet oil, and is placed in the right hand for conjuration. Incantations are spoken, and they depend and vary from person to person. Flesh is eaten to command the spirit through the deceased, to your bidding or to summon. The dead's clothes are worn in this ritual. The body would rise and answer questions of the sorcerer if done right. Then afterwards they would burn the body after never to rise again. The best time to perform any necromancy is the witching hour or at midnight, during a storm or rain and wind. You can also perform necromancy by being in a graveyard and drawing a circle around the grave you wish to summon. You burn herbs and incense like hemlock, aloe, mandrake, and opium. I use a lot of frankincense with these and I found it to be successful. 
You can light the area with torches and even draw number three in the sand or dirt and call on Hecate to help you. Um, she's highly associated with necromancy and the dead, so um, she is my deity and I absolutely love working with her. Modernly, we communicate more than trying to raise the dead. Black mirrors, mirrors, pendulums, spirit boards, seances, and sigils. Always have a link to the dead you're trying to communicate with or create one between you and them. We work through the energy with the spirits. And also I want to throw in there that offerings help a lot as well. Now let's talk about black mirrors for a moment. Black mirrors are used for scrying, divination, and spirit summoning. I'm going to go over how you can make one today. And I will show you how to use a black mirror. So the first step is you're going to purchase a mirror of your choice. And you're going to also buy masking tape and matte enamel, enamel sorry, I always have trouble saying that word, enamel, enamel, <laughs> spray paint. Uh, tape all around the mirror and all around the glass. So you're going to use the masking tape around every part that you do not want to be black, but you do want the mirror, the glass part to be black. All right, number two, three, sorry. Set the taped mirror on a newspaper and spray the mirror until it's smooth and covered in black, and then let it dry. If you have glass or a mirror and you want to cut out a triangle and then add the glass to it, for spirit summoning, you can. Um, I just made mine. Ugh like this. This is my black mirror. Yep. Believe it or not, I got this at the Dollar Tree too, and I think it just, it looks cool. <laughs> um, if I feel I need the triangle, I'll add it behind the mirror with a piece of cardboard, but I rarely use it. You can make the triangle from plywood, cardboard, sigil, or paper. The triangle of Solomon looks like this. I didn't have a lot of time to draw it out perfect, but and uh, some people feel that they need to use that for spirit communication because of the Goetia and then the Triangle of Solomon and all that stuff, but we will get further into that later. Um, so I will make a part two to this and we will use some of the tools for necromancy or summoning the dead in the next video and I will show you how to do it. Now for the spell out of my book of shadows. Here we go. I just love this. All right. So this one is to bring nightmares to somebody. During a waning moon, call on dark deities for protection, then do a house cleanse after. Preparation, you're going to want 13 black candles, one candle in each corner of the altar, one on each side for every corner of the pentagram. Anoint each candle with non-purifying oil and cast the circle. So then you're going to imagine, because this is of course going to be at night time, you're going to imagine that person sleeping in their bed for a little bit. You're going to imagine you walking over and you think out the nightmare you want them to have and you just kind of plant that seed right in there. And you imagine them having this nightmare and it's playing out exactly how you wanted it to. Then you are going to cite the incantation once that is done. And the incantation is you would speak your purpose on why you're cursing them. And then you say, Enchanting deities of the underworld, I call upon thee to help me perform my evil deeds. 
Come at once and aid this dream of terror. Come at once to bring name of the person horror. Crawl inside their head deep in the night. Bring her the dream I see so clear. Bring her my dream of fright. She shall never forget this dream I made. Let it stay with her until her grave. Now go at once and travel the night. Bring, and then the name of the person, dreams of fright. And then keep meditating on that dream going into their head. Then clear all negative thoughts, close the circle, and then you will cleanse your house. Um, it don't have to be a her in the incantation. I only put her because I was using it for somebody. But we will be doing a part two tomorrow. And we will also be talking about how to unblock your chakras and unblock your third eye and open up. With love and light from Mary Covenant.